so used to being on stage and just uh, having the drum kit in front of me. It's kind of like a shield. So I'm now naked. <laughs> all right. Um, it feels like that, at least. Um, all right. So uh, just before I got on stage, I met someone uh, very beautiful. Her name is Maryam, and I hope she's still here. Uh, I didn't want to start my talk like that, but she inspired me to start it uh, like this because she came up to me and uh, she was, she's probably going to be so embarrassed and she's going to kill me, but she started crying to me, telling me that her dream was always to be a drummer and seeing a female drummer on stage is kind of like um, a boost of maybe one day, uh, maybe becoming a drummer too. And I just want to say it's never too late to become a musician, so it's always good to tap on things and, and try and expand. Um, I was very lucky to have parents that are very supportive. And my dad um, wanted to play the drums himself. You know how some people have like a midlife crisis and buy a new car? Well, my dad bought a drum kit home. <laughs> and uh, he didn't want to go to classes by himself. So he decided to drag me because my older sister didn't want to go. So, um, so I was six, I'm 30 now, so that's around 24 um, years of me drumming, uh, which is, um, there's a saying in Arabic, they say, Tikrar bi'allim lihmar, I mean, shuttar, which is basically, you learn <laughs> a lot when you practice. Practice, practice makes perfect. And uh, basically, um, I was very lucky to have my dad that wanted to learn the drums, and we kind of started going to classes together. And then after some time, he didn't have time to practice, and I did. So slowly he started to back out of the lessons because he was too shy that I'm getting slightly better than him. But then again, most women can multitask more than men. He hates me saying that story. Um, so uh, I've been performing with different musicians. And being a drummer, sometimes, you know, you kind of, uh, you're in the back, and the singer is always in front of you. You see his bum, and, you know, this is how drummers are, are on stage. You know, you're hardly showing. So, um, uh, fortunately for me, I get to see Jamil's bum. So, <laughs> he likes to stand next to me, though, where um, I met this beautiful artist. Uh, Jamil was performing on stage uh, at this um, festival that I was working at. It's called Mother of the Nation. And uh, he was performing, and I heard him perform. And uh, he definitely caught my ears and my eyes and uh, every sense of me. And I thought, I'm going to go talk to this guy. So um, when he was done, I went up to him, and I just didn't know how to express myself. I just opened my arms and gave him a hug. And I could tell he had a f like f some sort of fear in his face. Um, uh, I told him I'm a female drummer, and I normally get a pat on the back to say, oh, well done, you know, you're a female drummer, great, you know? And it, it kind of annoys me a little bit uh, because people stereotype and they think that, um, you know, just because I'm a female drummer that I'm not very good. And uh, his reaction was like, why would you tell me you're a female drummer? You're obviously female, I can tell. So, <laughs> so you could just bring your drums and we could jam together. And uh, we called our band, which we've only practiced for 40 minutes. I'm not exaggerating, but we've had all these performances in uh, Dubai. And you can come in and hear us uh, play in different uh, places. I'll let you know after the talk. So bare hands and bare feet, it's basically his bare hands and my bare feet. Um, so I'm a Gemini. And most Geminis have different personalities and we're quite, um, I've heard that before, like, you know. So the good thing about being so crazy is that you get to have loads of different talents and different ways to express yourself. And I actually went and studied art at university um, because I, I took uh, music as a very personal hobby. Um, so this is some of my artwork that I'm going to show you. I studied in the UK, Central St. Martins, and my parents really pushed me forward towards music, art, and drama. And uh, again, I'm very lucky to have parents like that, and I always tell other people that they can be these parents for their own children. Um, so how do we find beauty through our everyday life? And this is how 
I make music is by being uh, interacted, uh, interactive with people that are beautiful in my life, but also objects. Um, so this is uh, an art piece that's, that is inspired by my sister, Fedra. And uh, basically, she's the sugar in my life. And this collection is called Sugar Rush. And she's basically a cupcake. And sometimes when you have sugar, it kind of like, um, makes you really, really, really excited, and then it drops you down really quickly, and she's done both in my life. <laughs> um, she's also, uh, we went to, traveled, we traveled to Malaysia together, and we went to uh, the Butterfly Garden. I think you have something similar here in Dubai. And at the end of the tour, they give you a box, and you open the box, and they've timed it perfectly. There's a cocoon inside, and the butterfly flies off, and you make a wish. So in mine, uh, I had two butterflies, so it kind of like reminded me of how we're both sisters, and she's done so much in my life, and uh, it's really lovely to have her in my life because she's been such a big inspiration to me. Um, two phones, well, basically we're a generation where we don't see much because we're always on our phone. And um, having a phone without a screen is pretty uh, alien alienating for me, although I was born in the 80s, so I actually remember using this phone. But um, it makes me think that we should look at each other more and you know, try and see the, obje the objects that we had grown up with rather than just uh, you know, socialize through a phone. Uh, this is another one that's inspired by my parents, and it's their love for music and how they've given me the space and the time and the compass to find myself through music. And, um, and I always think uh, without them, I wouldn't have been able to find myself through music because I think that they've been the platform and the space uh, to allow me to do that at home. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's very, very, like I, I always uh, thank my parents for that. So this is dedicated to them. Uh, my last one is just one of my favorites, to be honest. Um, we're three sisters, uh, and uh, they're my three siblings, uh, my older sister, Fedra, and my younger sister, Christina. And it's always been the three of us at home, and we've always been such an inspiration to each other. And I think uh, sometimes people that don't have siblings, their friends are that person. And uh, we're very lucky to have each other, because I think th this is how you get inspired, by looking at someone else as just as, as, as amazing as you, or even more amazing, and you kind, they lift you up, or the other way around. And it's uh, nice to have that, because collaboration is very important. All right, so I like to leave, um, let's say, echoes or a memory for the audience. So um, just like that butterfly that was in my box that I opened in Malaysia, it kind of stayed with me. And I think it's very important that you don't leave this talk without thinking of what inspired you today and how to take it with you, whether it was creating art or talking about it or allowing you know, to take a picture and share it on, uh, online. So make sure that you have a, an echo or a, or a print somehow. Um, so um, most artists collect things. Uh, they call me the hoarder in the house. I somehow can't let go of things. And um, one of the things that I grew up with was a security blanket. And my mom used to put it in the washing machine and wash it. And I used to get really upset because it would go for ages to be washed. And then when she gives it back to me, it doesn't smell like anything anymore. It smells like nice, I don't know, linen sheets. And it, this is not how I wanted, to, I wanted it to smell. Um, so I made up a small story about that but inspired by another artist called um, Najil Ali. Uh, Najil Ali created this small cartoon character and, uh, that represents Palestine. And it's basically this five-year-old, or uh, is, what, uh, is he five years? I think around 10, if I remember correctly. And he's got his uh, hands clap, clasped um, to his back watching war, basically, and watching what is happening. And I thought, why not have a female version of Handala? Like, why is he, why is he a boy? 
And uh, I think if it was a female, maybe she wouldn't have her hands clasped back. Uh, maybe she would be doing something. And I thought it would be the best, um, the best way to call her something alongside Handala. And I thought Hanandala. And Hanan is actually mercy, affectionate, loving, tender, compassionate. So I thought Hanan would be the perfect way to start my story. And basically, uh, she's, uh, I wanted to keep the black and white image of Handala and allow her to walk in a, in a city where uh, it's pretty empty. She's basically walking around and she sees a tank and her beloved um, blanket uh, gets stepped on or, uh, and then uh, torn. I'm only explaining this because I showed it earlier to a friend of mine and at the end he was like, what? Uh, so yeah, she gets through a barbed wire and gets caught. More ripped uh, fabric. Uh, it might be me. <laughs> and then uh, you see soldier feet. And at the end, this is the map of Palestine. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, I'm not a politician, and uh, I have a lot of... Um, a lot of friends from all around the world and they have different views about where we come from and what's exactly on the map and what's written on the map. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, there's some innocence about children and I thought, alhamdulillah, is the perfect way of expressing myself without being uh, politically wrong. Anyhow, uh, on a lighter note, I'm going to talk about collaboration again. Um, so what I wanted to say is we create wonderful things through collaboration. And I was very lucky to be working as a scenic painter because of my art background. And the good thing, is about, uh, the good thing about being a scenic painter is I get to work on movies. And uh, meeting new people is definitely an inspiration uh, for artwork and my music and a lot of things in my life. So I got to meet Brad Pitt, <laughs> which was awesome. Uh, I worked on a movie with him uh, called War Machine. War Machine is going to come out in 2016, hopefully at the end of this year. And I was asked to do um, costume style, costume styling, which is basically um, aging the clothes, making them look old, and making them look as if they were worn before. So that was a lot of fun because um, my boss was actually my sister, who's a costume designer, and uh, it was nice to get some, um, uh, some insight into this world because it's, it's always been being on stage, being in front of the camera, so being behind the camera and um, watching other people shine was actually probably the best part of, of the whole uh, film industry. I also want to talk about being a scenic painter on The Martian with Matt Damon, and uh, the film was obviously directed by Ridley Scott. Um, it was a pleasure working with Matt Damon. It was funny, at the end of uh, the, the, the movie, he actually came up to us and said hello to everybody, and he's like, hey, my name is Matt. Hey, my name is Matt. And we're like, we know who you are, we know your wife, we know your kids. <laughs> but yeah, it was such an honor to work with such talented people. Um, so this is some of uh, my work, but also the team that I've been working with. It was fun because we were working in the middle of the desert and making it seem as if it was in space. So it was, it was fun because it kind of um, allows me to express myself not in music and not in drumming, but also using brushes and color. And that for me was, um, was very enlightening and it was a very interesting uh, experience. Yes! <laughs> I didn't get a picture with Brad Pitt, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, this is good. <laughs> Thanks. So I wanted to end this talk by saying that express yourself in any medium, as long as it is made with love. And, uh, and today we stand here and we express ourselves with words and with music and with 
telling our stories and sharing our art or sharing different things. And I think that you could go home and do the same and it could become larger and larger because you can use any medium that you want. And uh, thank you for having me on stage.